So what we're going to be talking about today is what exactly is living heritage? We're going to be working through some ideas for what we can do for events, um, maybe coming up with some possible issues that, you, that might arise, and hopefully by the end of it we'll have a few solutions as well. So I have the running order there for you, so we're going to have groups um, in your tables. You're already nicely split into groups. So I just ask that you nominate somebody to do a lot of the writing and to be your group speaker. Um, so, unaccustomed though you may be to public speaking. <laughs> and then we're going to go through the brainstorming of what is living heritage. Then we'll do event ideas. You'll then, I'll go around the room with a roving mic and your speaker will present that idea to the whole group. And while we're doing that, I want you to be thinking of, hmm, here's something that could go wrong with that. Here's a problem that they might face. Here's an issue that could come up and write it on a post-it. Then we're going to go around and you're going to put the post-its onto the person's flip chart that has their event ideas on it. So you won't be give, uh, suggesting challenges for your own and it'll all be anonymous so you can be as cutting as you like. Um, and then lastly, we're going to go back to our own tables and have a little brainstorm about what solutions we could come up with. And lastly then, we're going to present those solutions to the room. So we should have you in and out of here within a handy hour. I know a lot of people are absolutely allergic to this kind of interactive thing, so uh, that's absolutely fine. And in the interest of the talk I delivered earlier about inclusivity, if you're really uncomfortable with that, please don't feel forced into doing it. So we want everyone to be happy and to have a good day. And that's the most diplomatic response I can give to that. <laughs> So, first and foremost, you've got loads of bits of post-it paper on your table. If you can grab your post-its and just write down ideas about what comes to mind when you hear the term living heritage. And we've got this piece of flip chart here where I have crudely drawn our logo. And uh, we're going to ask you to just send somebody up to stick them all on there. Just to get, us, like, get those creative juices flowing and get us thinking about what living heritage means to you. You've got five minutes and I am setting a timer. Off you go. <laughs> Okay, right, so that's our first section of the day. And if you have any more that you want to add on, you can keep doing so throughout the session. Um, I'm going to leave this up here so you can come back and have a look at it later, or if you want to take a picture of it on your phones to bring home with you. But I'll just read out a few of the ideas that are here. Local stories, sports, history, knowledge, architecture, archaeology, dance, hedge laying, thatching, old water pumps, traditional music, ongoing inheritance, uh, crafts, music, sport, environment, um, tree logging by horses, very interesting, graveyards and locals, is that the locals in the graveyard or the locals around the graveyard? <laughs> <laughs> or the locals waiting to go into the graveyard. <laughs> uh, creating a wildflower meadow, lovely, for future generations. Uh, people practicing traditional crafts and skills, very topical, like to see it. Irish music, GAA, crafts, um, mm, 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 forges, Irish poetry, old stonework, butter making, bats, um, language, lace making, remembering our culture, recording our past archaeology and history, survival of ideas. That's a great one. Kaylee, love to see that. Practices, knowledge, skills passed down over the years. And intergenerational, that's a great word. Oh God, I'm knocking the place. Right, so now I hope we're all um, feeling a bit more confident in getting up and chatting and everything. And sure, we all got to know each other over lunch. So the next section now, will get you thinking about what event ideas you might have. So, in your groups, you'll see you have a piece of flip chart paper in front of you that says events across the top of it. So I want you to get one person to take control of the writing, so preferably not a doctor, because we do want to be able to read it, <laughs> and come up with some ideas about events that reflect what we've just come to understand as living heritage. So I want you to think about three events, so think of, like, and then you can settle on one for later on, but right now, we want to just get you thinking in different levels. So something really simple that can be achieved on a small scale. Then you want to go a bit larger scale. And I want to get an idea that's absolutely blue sky, won the Euro millions, money is no object, we'll take the lot, put something on there as well for that. Like what would you do if you absolutely had no restrictions on you whatsoever? So we're going to give you 15 minutes 
and I'm going to cut you short that 15 minutes a little bit to go around and just keep in mind one person is going to have to explain what the ideas are and I'm going to have to ask you to keep those explanations as concise as possible because we are on the clock. So your 15 minutes start now. Okay, so I'm going to take this mic around the room now. So if we can all just keep the chatter down as low as possible, just so that everyone can be heard. So we're going to go table to table and you're going to present your ideas to the room as quickly and concisely as you can. And while that's happening, I want you to be thinking at your own tables about problems that could arise and write them on a piece of poster paper because you're going to be attaching them to that piece of flip chart. So I'm going to come over here first. So who's our nominated speaker? Kian Corla? <laughs> it's yourself. Lovely. So I'll hand you this. Okay. Uh, thank you. So um, we're talking about how people lived back in the day, whatever day that was, that we want to think about. So the, the easy idea was talks in schools and we can get a specialist in, um, a heritage specialist in, and we believe it's about 60 euros if you're a Daesh school, and they would give good talks. So that was a good, easy one, and it'll get the kids involved. So our more advanced one would be allowing the people of the community to sample the skills that did exist in our place before, so they experience the job, they'd actually get to do it. So stuff like cutting turf, churning butter, um, you know, making jam, all those sort of older skills, the blacksmithing skills, all this sort of thing. Um, but obviously that would be a big fate and it would be huge insurance cost. Um, so, uh, and that's the, that's the dirty word of the day. So, um, and then blue sky, we're going to go all singing, all dancing. We're going to build a visitor center in our place going to have museum and we're going to restore the buildings that need restoration and we're going to invite people in from all over the world to come and sample our fabulous place and the heritage that we have That's it. lovely thanks very much i like that an entire generation traumatized by the bog again <laughs> They've gotten away with it too handy now. It's time they suffered how we suffered. Right, so who's speaking here? Lovely, I'll hand this over to you. Remember to be thinking of challenges they might face and write them on your post-it notes, notes as we go. Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, we have decided to take place as an example. So to have all generations be involved in it. So the simple one is a demonstration of the lace itself with the use of online, making a video in advance. So as we all know, laces takes a lot of time. And also having an in-person demonstration of it as well. Um, large scale from that then that we could have a workshop of people participating in craft lace. So we said Carrick Macross and over a two day scale as well. And then the blue skies, we're going all out and having a fantastic festival of crafts and opening it up to all Irish crafts of the past. So you'd have demonstrations, food, music, workshops, everything involved there. Yeah. Lovely. You could go nationwide with that now. <laughs> right. Who is our speaker over here? Lovely. Hand over to you. How you doing? We have uh, loads of uh, ideas for that surplus that the government is experiencing. That, 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 that tw 23 billion, is it? Um, at a simple level, we were talking uh, about uh, wood turning demonstrations, butter making, walking tours, uh, and another one uh, for schools, uh, genealogy tracing for students to trace the history of their family names. Uh, at a larger scale, then, interactive histor historical tours, virtual reality, augmented reality, interactive tours, and developing those for uh, historical sites. Uh, seed banks um, and uh, trying to preserve ancient examples of uh, particular crops or uh, see, uh, apples varieties, um, uh, reenactors um, at, at a large scale, and then the blue sky thinking, uh, big dig, community archaeology, um, uh, but giving people experience of actually going out and digging. Um, the schools collection that's been put online uh, from 
Yeah, um, that a, a 2023 version of that would be done. Uh, a heritage building takeover um, that uh, schools, students, whatever groups would be invited into a building and that they run a program of events uh, in that uh, and a musical instrument for all. Great to be thinking in terms of that surplus. <laughs> Great to be thinking in terms of uses for the surplus. <laughs> Practicalities always. Um, here, who have we got? Okay, we went with a specific event for each one, so rather than have a, a range of, of options. So our first one, the small event, a pond or waterside dipping event. Uh, so since you get kids getting their hands wet and dirty, seeing what's in there, but then you also have maybe local people from an older generation who can say what they used to remember in that pond. So obviously, hopefully there is good life still there, but they might remember when it was teeming with fish and eels that maybe are not there anymore. They can tell those stories. So you're, you're spreading the knowledge of what is there, what used to be there, and then you can talk about, well, how can we make it better going forward in, into the future? So that's a small event. Our large event is a forest event. So that would take different aspects. You'd be looking at maybe the old Brehan laws and back to the Celtic times, and then maybe more recent traditions and skills, coppicing, etc. Uh, and then we'll turn it into maybe a forest bathing event to look at sort of a more modern take on the benefits of forests. We'll get the kids playing ancient games. Uh, we maybe talk a little bit about foraging in a sustainable way. Uh, I'm not a huge foraging fan, but in a sustainable way. And then bushcraft skills as well. So that's the large event. And then our blue sky event is you take an old ancient mill that's fallen into ruin. It's restored. It's on a mill race, so it's not a fish barrier. We restore it. We get it operational. So you're grinding the corn. And then out of that flour, you get traditional bread makers in to show people how to make bread and to get the chance to make their own bread and see it you know, from beginning to end, the whole process. So you're bringing the baked goods to the next session. <laughs> Great. Uh, over here. Um, so we, we took one event and then went from simple large scale to blue sky. Um, so the simple event would be a butter making demonstration. You get someone in to demonstrate how to make butter. Uh, the large scale is a weekend craft festival. So you've got a local festival that runs for the whole weekend with different crafts. Um, but the blue sky one would be a national month of crafts um, as, a, as a festival. So you'd spend the first week going era by era through. So you'd have something from butter making in the Viking era through to the second week where it would be butter making in the 13th century to the 18th century to now. So you'd see the evolution of different forms of crafts throughout and it would be across the country for a whole month because you don't have a limit on your budget. <laughs> God, between the bread and the butter, lads, will be sorted. <laughs> um, who's speaking here? Yourself? Um, yeah, for, for our simple event, we just we talked about doing a walking tour um, just of the local area. Um, yeah, I think everyone kind of knows what that's about. Then for our large-scale event, we were talking about um, kind of putting on a play or dramatising kind of historical events, so coming up with the sets, the script, the actors, etc. We got very excited about our Blue Sky event. <laughs> um, and we kind of, so it started off with recreating a 1908 historic house. So uh, one of the women, has, or one of the people at our table has a, an Im inventory of it. So basically tracking down every single item that would have been in that house from all over the world and like putting it back in the house and that could be done with kind of a farm or any other buildings and um, then we talked about how it could be made into a documentary or like some sort of competition maybe like a tv show like if you were to have like different people took a room and you would follow it so it'd be like a competition who can get the room kind of back to 1908 the fastest and that people might engage in it in that way so yeah we were getting very excited and then we talked about how if you were to combine that with our kind of large scale like the dramatizing maybe you could go past like doing a house and do like a whole area and it'd be like a streetscape or like a Universal Studios of kind of history where you'd be walking through and seeing different plays and the house and everything. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Room to Improve meets Downton Abbey. <laughs> That's great. Thanks so much. Over here, yourself. Oh, yeah. Um, so some of these have already been said, so I'll just skim over. The, the simple one was a talk, and I think that's fairly achievable. We could probably host one tonight if you wanted. Um, large scale was uh, already said as well. It's a workshop for, for traditional crafts, maybe something bigger like making a curragh or a few people making a set of creels um, where you'd have to get a venue and things like that. 
And then for the Blue Sky project, um, this was already said, it's more large scale historical conservation, restoration, um, like a courthouse or a castle, getting ministerial consent for digging for archaeologists, um, then uh, historical conservationists, and then eventually getting the building into a stage where we'd be able to use it today. Nice. Yeah. Lovely, and we're at our final table here, so who's going to be taking the reins? It's yourself, there you go. Um, well, the, the simple project, we wrote it in black because it's straightforward and simple. Citizen science project on a stream for the whole community in the locality. And the symbol of that is just the seed. The second one then uh, is bigger, is the seedling. That's the symbol for it. And we wrote it in blue because we're getting uh, a bit more excited and the colour is taking form and... Anyway, it's a river system survey monitoring, dash monitoring. And the third one has parts A and B. There's only three of us here, so <laughs> we, I, we, I wrote what two people had said and joined them up. So, because uh, one's connected with the other. So the third one is, the simple for it is a tree, because this is the big picture and it's going to last forever. A pay the farmers grants to clean and maintain the standard of clean water. So that begs the question, if the farmers aren't farming intensely, this is the B part of it, because the farmers are not farming intensely, C, A, above, meat and milk would be cultured, in inverted commas, by microbes in laboratories. That's it. <laughs> Great. I love how visually you went there with the seed, the seedling and the tree. Um, so what we're going to do now, I hope you've all been um, paying attention and making some notes on challenges that those projects could face. If you do run out of post-it notes, just ask one of the staff that's around here and uh, we'll be able, like one of the Heritage Council staff, you see we're the ones with these um, name tags, we'll be able to give you more post-it notes. But yeah, if you want to get up out of your seats, we're going to make you do a little bit of work now and digest that lovely lunch. And just go around with the post-it notes, write a challenge that you think that project might face and pop it onto the piece of flip chart paper. So you're critiquing other people's ideas so you don't have to be too, uh, too precious about it. So we'll give you five minutes for that, guys, if you want to get up and do that now. So what we're going to do now is we're going to brainstorm some solutions to those challenges that are in front of you. So you'll see you have another piece of flip chart paper on your table. It should have gone round there. And it'll say solutions on the top of it. Um, oh, no, they're coming around now if you don't already have them. So what we're going to ask you to do now is look at the challenges that you've been given and really think about how you would meet them. So obviously, with the, like the bigger the scale of the project, so your blue sky ideas are going to have re really big challenges. But again, think about how you'd meet them. So how would you meet the challenge? Who would you turn to for guidance? What expertise would you need? And ultimately, can it be done? So I'm going to give you another 15 minutes to think about that. Right, so this is going to be our last little section of the day. So then you're free from me cracking the whip itchy, which I'm sure you'd be delighted to hear. So I'm going to come around the room now and we're going to get you to just present what your solutions are. So talk about the challenges that were presented to you and any of the solutions that you came up with. So I'm going to go backwards around the room this time. I see people still furiously scribbling. <laughs> Carol Vorderman wouldn't stand for that now, I tell you. <laughs> All right, so are we ready to go here? Sorry. The, oh, yeah, the, the si simple citizen science project uh, would, uh, the problem was biodiversity issues, bio, biosecurity issues, and we said well, we'd train these up, they'd be professionals and they'd be. Uh, they'd have good hygiene practices and be trained. The second, the river system survey monitoring uh, was the same thing about biosecurity. And again, they'd have to be trained up and employed by the local council because it's a bigger project as well. And 
well paid. I don't think you said that here, did you? But it, it only makes sense that they, yeah, because they have to. Well, it, well, if you're if you're paid enough, let's say you care about what you're doing. That's why I said pay them properly. Make uh, cultured food to make cultured food prop possible. It should be financially viable for the farmer through funding. And the other that was the co a lot of comments about buy-in and uh, funding and farmers don't care, and get challenge of getting the farmers on board. So that's the answer, money, funding. And then the other big thing came up three or four times here was political, political will or whatever, and <laughs> I don't have the answer to that. I will change that. I think, it, I think it's what, uh, uh, sorry, what, what was the young lad that, spoke he, he hadn't the answer to whatever this morning ronan it's another non-answerable political question <laughs> that somebody will answer later on so that's Great, it thank you i see ronan down the back of the room they're delighted with being called a young lad <laughs> right <laughs> Not at all. right so who's yourself again um, so I'd like to point out that we only got three post-its, so uh, there, there wasn't too many people whinging, so this might actually go ahead. Uh, um, w one of them was weather, and uh, we said that we'd aim for the summertime, uh, wear suitable clothing, plan indoor events, and have a marquee on standby. Um, for the big dig, um, one of the complaints was that due to a lack of uh, archaeological specialists and training that information might be lost. I think that they're kind of talking about uh, if we, this is if we go digging. But um, there is solutions to it. You could engage with universities, so you could get some training students down. You could um, provide funding for a licensed archaeologist to oversee the uh, project and they could provide periodic updates and reports and things like that and uh, just make sure that everything is done ethically correct. You could also get a PhD down, maybe someone in the university that had to do a write-up on something, whether it was a monastic town, um, so they could uh, present the findings and be able to publish the work. And uh, lastly, then you could ask a commercial archaeology company for a favor. So, <laughs> I don't know really, yeah. And. And then the last one then was uh, finding experts, but I think everyone is kind of an expert in something, but you could find them through networking events, just like this one, uh, contact your local heritage officer, you could upskill, or you could Google, you could use Google, and that's it. Great. Lovely. Thank you. I know archaeologists are very pro bones, don't know about pro bono. <laughs> Right, who have we got here? Yourself? Yeah. Come around here. Um, yeah, so we got a, a good few sticky notes. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> um, so the first issue, or the first thing that was on ours was around the walking tour with weather. Um, so we just said the big thing with this is clear advertisement, just being really clear about it, that it is outdoors, this is what you're offering. Um, everyone can bring their Heritage Week umbrella that we just received. <laughs> um, I have volunteers, so link with local groups and societies. Make sure you ask for help when you need help. Um, in terms of insurance, to have disclaimers on sign-ups and or on your Eventbrite, etc., and then paying for public liability insurance um, where it's needed. And then the next one was around local talent and actors' egos. So I suppose with the actors' egos, we'd have an audition process, and then the local talent look to the local groups again, um, drama skills, and if we needed advice, we'd just ask Paul Mescal, it'd be fine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no harm, you know. And then uh, the security for antiques. So the MSPI collections and loan policy and then historic contents insurance would cover this. And then in terms of the lack of money and the cost, well, we kind of had blue sky answers for this since it was blue sky thinking. But clearly the government and big public donors are going to give us loads of money. Our documentary is going to be picked up by BBC, Netflix, all of that, obviously. And uh, we might even have a bit of product placement on it. So, yeah, that's really it, yeah. <laughs> Thank you.
I love that. Blue sky solutions for blue sky thinking. <laughs> right, and here. Uh, yeah, so we got a couple of post-its. Uh, whether um, our solution was to have indoor or tented events, uh, making sure the bung is in the butter vat properly. We'll, we'll try and do that. Uh, uh, finding people who have traditional skills and crafts, um, using social media or the Craft Council of Ireland, putting out an open call. Uh, in terms of f uh, finding funding, Heritage Council grants. Uh, <laughs> crowdfunding and sponsorships or county council grants. Um, health and safety, food hygiene, having a health and safety audit prior to that with HSE and the Food Safety Authority. Um, and then uh, what's the healthy option if we're just doing butter? Um, <laughs> that's that's kind of, that's what we argue. That's what we argue. Yeah. Um, and then health and safety insurance is checking with the insurance broker to source best value insurance or having NDAs. Thanks very much. <laughs> and yeah, I agree. Butter is a healthy option. All in moderation. Not a word I ever learned. <laughs> right, and here. Thank you very much. Okay, so we had a lot of similar uh, post-its, uh, some around weather, and I refer everybody to Billy Connolly. There's no such thing as bad weather, just the wrong clothes. Uh, health and safety, obviously you would do your risk assessments, and this went across all the different events. Insurance came up, and we, what we'd say, particularly for a small and large event, is try and link up with established groups who already have insurance in place, things like tidy towns and things like that, save you having to go and buy it yourself. Our big blue sky project of restoring the mill, a lot came up with planning permission around that. So obviously you would engage with your heritage officer, the local authority, other relevant uh, bodies and authorities around that. And then you'd look for funding. It could be things like leader, claw, you'd go, go for match funding as well. And then there was also a question around after the event, ongoing, what's going to happen with this blue sky event. So we, we talked about maybe turning it into a social enterprise. It could have, it'd be non for profit, but there could be commercial elements to it. So you're making this bread, you could have a tea house attached to it so the money goes back in, but it's also an outreach, so ongoing, you'd have schools coming in to see how these skills happen, etc. So, it, it, you know, there's an ongoing benefit back to the community all the time. Um, anything else there, guys? Have I covered it all? Mm -hmm. Covered it all. There you go. Yeah, that's great. you would be giving Mr. Brennan a run for his money. <laughs> Yesteryear's bread today. <laughs> right, are we doing here? Thank you. Um, you stole my line about the weather. So uh, <laughs> we're all going to get it together and have the opposite to a rain dance. So that's going to sort out our weather problems. So we don't need to worry about weather for the walking tour. Um, but in all seriousness, yeah, you have a plan B for bad weather. Or again, you inform participants, make sure they dress appropriately, make sure they're aware that it's outdoors. We're all li living in Ireland. I think everybody knows that you've got to dress for the weather. Um, insurance then, um, we had, I suppose, more blue sky thinking, but that the government, you could, we could get together and make sure that the government come up with um, a plan to ensure cultural heritage type events like this and actually they manage the insurance of these um, events. I, that's probably very blue sky thinking, but other ways of looking at it is membership organisations like the Wheel, because they can offer sort of group discounts when it comes to insurance. So look to those sort of um, organisations for, um, for insurance. Um, then when we came to genealogy tracing, we had comments about it's all online now, no real investigation required, we completely disagree. Um, we were talking about living um, genealogy, so actually going, you know, we're talking about secondary school children here or uh, younger kids going to talk to their parents, their grandparents, their grand-aunts, their grand-uncles and find out about their genealogy and their history that way. Um, so real life experience, that's not included online. So. Um, then, with regards to our VR and augmented reality, somebody commented that um, how to maintain um, this, you know, um, because of IT obsolescence and things like that. So, I think um, we've said that uh, that sort of um, experience would have a, a, a certain lifespan. Um, it would be fantastic for a period of time. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of people will benefit from it, benefit from it but nothing lasts forever. And in terms of um, uh, technology like this, it does become obsolete and the next new thing will come along. So it's not a reason not to do it, I don't think. 
Um, somebody said um, around our instrument, an instrument for everybody in the country, not inclusive, not everyone likes or can play an instrument. I think that was the whole point, <laughs> that we would give an instrument to everybody so that they could learn how to play it. <laughs> um, absolutely, um, no, no pressure to accept the instrument and there is, you know, um, very complex instruments like illum pipes and then very easy instruments like drums. So, you know, I, I'm sure we'd find somebody for, we'd find something for everybody. Um, then in terms of the schools project, um, a 2023 schools project funding, um, again, um, because the, the um, folklore commissions project in the 1930s and 40s was such a massive success and people are benefiting benefiting it from it still today i think raising funds in the ireland funds heritage council philanthropy i'd say there'd be no problem funding that we'd get all the money together in the morning there'd be no problem um and then finally um a few sort of uh similar comments like ma majority of people not interested in heritage um <laughs> can't get enough people. I'm sort of hoping this is devil av devil's advocate stuff. So we completely disagree with this. Dublin, and I'm sure the rest of the country, is absolutely packed on Culture Night. I mean, I know from working it for the last 20, I don't know, 15 years. I don't know how long it's going on now. It's the busiest night of the year. Fantastic night. People are extremely interested in this. Um, the Viking Festival, Baldoyle, packed thousands of people attend. That's just other, ex other example. So I think there is an interest out there for all of this. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant, thank you so much. All right, over here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay, hi everyone. So we were the lace different events. So the first one was the demonstrations and we got back older people not good with technology. So we were looking at it in person, so demonstrations, but also training possibly to show them that they can watch it online or have the videos playing while demonstrations are happening as well. The second one was workshops, and the, these were really good challenges. So supplies and lace can be made with a needle and thread. Loss of the intimacy of smaller events, so we can have smaller groups for workshops. Hopefully they'll all be sold out so we can have many days of it. And crowds too big goes from that one into the next one. So just to make sure that you have risk assessments for your events done. A lot of volunteer stewards all going well. On a health and safety front, you need a first aider on site. If we have our lovely Blue Skies event, you do have to have an ambulance on site as well. Insurance is our all mayhem horribleness, so hopefully we'll get um, insurance with the event insurance people. Food prep, safety, people who are working with food, you need to make sure they have the HACCP, access to refrigerator, the good practices for storage of food. Uh, then we got cooperation and buy-in for from community and money people. So we're hoping to pub publicize to key audience. And because it's blue sky, it's all free. So they're not gonna make money out of it. And last one was a really good one. And hopefully this can help some people as well. So crime guarded protection. So volunteers, there is free online courses for safeguarding and inclusion courses. So I would highly recommend them. Guard vetting, if you are volunteering, most people have that as well with children. Um, additional stewards and if it's super duper big and we're all going to a what a lace EP version make sure you have guards on site as well Excellent. brilliant got electric picnic of lace so that'd be great <laughs> all right and here it's yourself speaking yeah. here you go um so we want to claim that we got the most twinges <laughs> okay so our first uh, event was Talks in Schools, and one of the standout comments was education doesn't work. And so we do have a counter to that. So by introducing experts, obviously it's not the, con the traditional education, it's not teacher classroom, and the children won't be lectured or they won't be rote learning. And so maybe some of it might sink in. Um, another counter was vetting, uh, vetting can be done, you know, uh, prior to the event and so on, and you wouldn't necessarily need it within a classroom for a one-off event. Uh, then there was no time or interest, 
and we think every teacher in Ireland would jump at the chance of an afternoon with her feet up at the back of the class. <laughs> or his, sorry. Uh, then on our second event, which was teaching the old skills and recreating the old world of our uh, very special place, um, the question that stood out was, why? Um, and obvi the obvious answer to that is just, why not? But... Uh, my, my personal feeling and the reason that I'm here is about stories and I think that we all came up with that as a solution. We need to pass the stories on. Our parents and grandparents taught us things about their lives. We need to teach our children and grandchildren about things. And if nobody is doing that, then all those skills, stories, um, interesting things, why the place names exist, and David was talking about that, that place names are being lost, local place names, because nobody's telling the story anymore that tells you why that field is called whatever it's called. So it builds community. It gives you a sense of place. Your sense of place isn't behind a blue screen. Your sense of place is in bricks, mortar, green fields, all that sort of thing. So that's very important. Um, thank you. Thank you back next week uh, <laughs> but uh, so for our blue sky um, we were going to have a museum the whole things all singing all dancing visitors center and um, obvi the obvious things came up um, you know the cost and insurance and weather well actually money is no object because at least two of us here have won the euro millions <laughs> so we're okay um, and it, then somebody said, it's all been done before. Uh, yeah, it has, but it's not our story. It's somebody else's. Yeah. Wonderful. Oh, I love that. Great, guys. So we've come up with some fantastic ideas and some interesting challenges and some really great solutions. So I'm afraid that is, the, well, you're probably delighted to hear, that is the end of the session. Um, so thank you all so much for contributing today. Thank you for being so engaging. Thanks for getting involved. Um, if you do have any questions at all um, about like community engagement or like generating ideas, you can always give us a shout too. All of our contact details have been shared throughout the day and you can find them all on the Heritage Council website as well. So I've taken up enough of your time. We're gone a little bit over, so I'm gonna hand you back to Ronan, who's going to carry on the rest of the day. But thank you all so much for all of your energy today.